Earlier today, we spoke to Mr. Kojo Boache, the Director of Public Policy for Facebook Africa, who started by explaining the initiatives through which this will be attained. The way we're going to achieve it is to carry on investing. I think the, the, the model and the numbers that have come out from this independent report by Analysis Mason look at our investments thus far. So look at our investments in fiber infrastructure that we've laid out in places like uh, Nigeria, Uganda, DRC and South Africa. It looks at our express Wi-Fi investments that we have across the region, South, Southern Africa, West Africa and East Africa as well, and how people millions of people are connecting to the internet through these particular investments that are done in partnership with mm. companies around the region. And um, so I think it's going to be a continuation of those investments, including a continuation of our investment in, in, into Africa. Mm. As, as, you, as you know, Gloria, we've invested alongside uh, uh, partners like, such as Wyok, uh, Vodacom, MTN, uh, um, uh, in, in, a, in a cable that's going to be one of the longest submarine cables in the world, connecting uh, East to West Africa for the first time and bringing more internet capacity or subsea capacity to the region than we currently have at the moment. And we're incredibly excited about the impact that this can have in connecting hundreds of millions of Africans to the internet. Sure. Uh, what will be the impact of these Facebook connectivity initiatives, especially to sub-Saharan Africa? Yeah, so, I mean, th there's, the, there's the monetary impact that we've outlined, or at least the analysis Mason has outlined in the report, which is $57 billion, looking at uh, whether that's the, the uh, uh, international capacity investments we've made or the investments we've made in uh, edge infrastructure that ensures that the data and the content that uh, Africans are using is here on the continent or doesn't have to be rerouted through through Europe or wherever else in order to be demanded. So there's, there's that piece. But I think it's those core issues of uh, affordability, availability, relevance and readiness, which are really key barriers to, to people coming online and to the continent having or, or walking into its digital future. I think those are the key barriers that we're going to try and resolve. Those are the problems that we're aiming to resolve, along with partners. I, I think the, 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 the economic impacts are widespread. I'm, I'm someone who's quite long in the tooth with regard to these issues, Gloria. And I know, I've known, you know, we know, uh, for those of us in this field, for a long time, uh, agencies such as the World Bank have indicated that a small increase in internet access, so a 10% increase, in broadband access, for example, for a long time we've known that it has a one point or increases uh, GDP by 1.38% or 1.28% if you're a richer country or 1.38% if you're a medium to low income country. So those economic impacts are well understood. Mm. And then we, we know the, the uh, social uh, and economic impacts of, of being able to use the internet, whether on your uh, mobile device or for some people who are fortunate enough their laptops or tablets can't be underestimated we know the kind of business that's carried on we know how much time is saved we know how people millions of people for example have been able to access health information with regard to covid and many of them through facebook and facebook applications or forensic health information so those social and economic impacts of having the internet are well known to us what, it, what isn't well known and what we have to focus on is ensuring that far more people on the continent have access to those. Far more people will be able to, are able to create businesses that, that rely on the net and use the net, are able to access goods and services, are able to purchase, are able to do their banking, are able to save time through internet access. And at this point in time, we have too few people doing that. Mm. Of course, uh, with such initiatives, I'm sure there must be some barriers along the way. Throughout these connectivity issues, what have been some of the hindrances uh, in the connectivity everywhere? Because, like you said, they are just in specific African countries. What are some of the hindrances that you've faced to reach everywhere, and then what's the way forward? In, in my sphere, as Director of Public Policy, I really think about some of those policy challenges that create or, or leads to, to those challenges. So. Uh, we've, we've, we've struggled with higher levels of taxation in the ICT sector, which is understandable yet unfortunate. Understandable because for many countries, the ICT sector remains the most structured, uh, well-organized sector from which governments can derive tax. And that's an unfortunate situation that we need to change. And uh, there are some governments that need to make decisions about 
uh, whether to reduce tax in order to, in, to release the energy within the ICT sector. We know in some countries there were issues with rights of way, enabling companies uh, such as ourselves and our partners to lay out infrastructure that's going to be core to, the, to, their, uh, to their people's future uh, economic and social prosperity. Many thanks indeed for your time, Mr. Kojo Boache, today. Thank you so much, Gloria. Thanks for your interest and, and thank you for your viewers as well.